a little tutorial briefly on your Dermagenesis Dermacare model serial number 3762. The on-off switch is right here. On the side of the machine you're going to see the two filters in place. These have been replaced. Uh, this was the color of the powder coming off of the rear filter when we received the machine from you. Uh, both of the filters now are clear and white as they should be. The front filter is the secondary filter and the rear filter is the primary filter or the first filter in succession. The filtration system filters there through here and then here. So this one will always get dirtiest first. When it starts to turn gray like this, that's when you need to take it out and replace it. You order new filters from us, we'll send you a pack. What you'll do is you'll take this filter out of this canister and you'll put it in this spot and you'll put a new filter in here. So you take the secondary one, put it in the primary spot, and replace the secondary one. These are replaced simply by, they, they are on a, they're on a pivot here, uh, which doesn't do very much, but it makes it a little easier to grab it when you want to remove the filter. This is what they look like. You stick it up in this slot here it should stay on its own and then you put the housing around it like that. There will sometimes be a little bit of crystal in the bottom of the canister. A little bit is okay. You can pour it out when you see it in there. It doesn't make a big difference if a lot of it accumulates in there. Um, it may mean that the seal between the filter and the place that it lodges into up here is uh, loose. So you'll want to redo it. Again, after about 15 to 20 treatments, you're going to want to replace this filter in the back. It will turn gray. In the case of the one that we received back, it was a bluish powdery gray. It was caked with that. It was clearly not changed in quite some time. Now we're going to move on to the front of the machine here. So there's two things here. You've got the the gauge, which shows the uh, vacuum pressure, and that would be here. And then you've got the vacuum pressure adjustment, and you've got the crystal flow adjustment. And I'm going to go over each of those with you briefly so that you can get a clear understanding of how they operate. Okay, first we're going to turn the machine on. It makes that sound. Uh, with the machine on, you're getting a, uh, a rating of uh, 10 here. This machine will go up to over 25 if you simply just crimp the one line here so you can see the actual absolute vacuum pressure capacity of the unit on this unit. And it varies. It's usually in the range of 25, rather 25. In this case, you've got a very strong machine. It's going up to 28. That's pretty remarkable. Very good condition. Uh, motor inside and the vacuum is very strong. That said, if we crimp that and then we turn the vacuum gauge down, you're going to see that number drop. If we put it in the middle, it'll go up. And if we raise it up, it'll go higher. So as I turn that gauge, this goes higher. Okay, the dial. If I turn the dial, the gauge goes higher. Now, this handpiece here has a on-off um, toggle where you can control the crystal flow at the handpiece as well as here at the machine. And so, in order to use this little toggle here, you're going to push it through on the back side so that it extends, and then you can see in, that was for pushing it through right there pushing it through. You can see through that clear plastic where you can imagine there is a, um, a tube inside the black handpiece, two of them actually, uh, going from the tube connection through the metal um, piece inside of there up to the tip. 
And so in this position, on this hand piece, you can see that the throughput is um, perpendicular to the crystal flow chamber or passageway. So when I turn it to be parallel, then you're going to get, and then I slot it in again so that it's in its spot, then you're going to get crystal flow. And I'm going to turn the crystal flow all the way up here so that you can see it um, in the handpiece. And one way that you see it, firstly, the, the crystal only flows through when the handpiece tip is occluded, when it's covered. And you'll be able to see it because it's going to pool right in here. Um, in other words, the crystal is pulled through the system by the closing of the gap. And the suction starts at the end point at the end of the system, it sucks the crystal all the way through. And so when I close the gap, you're going to see crystal start to come through. And you can see it. And in the bottom, you see how it disappears when I put my finger there? So that's how you can tell crystal is coming through. And that's how you know that it's working. You can also probably see it on my finger there. And then if I turn the crystal flow volume down, you're going to get less crystal passing in, and so that's how you control the crystal volume. Now all of that being said, on the highest setting, with the crystal flowing at its highest point, if we go ahead and block it on the handpiece here again by turning that, then when we cover it with a finger, you're not going to see Maybe you do see a little crystal flowing through, but not very much. Maybe that wasn't set completely. There you go. So um, none or almost none, pretty much no crystal comes through. And that way, if you don't want to reach back to the machine while you're in the middle of a treatment, you can turn the crystal flow off at the hand piece uh, because you may want to use the suction to clean up spare crystal that might be on someone's skin. So you can use this as a way to pick up the remaining crystal, or you may want to do a collagen stimulation treatment on someone's skin by running the vacuum only without the crystal flowing. Uh, that's the long and the short of it on the front end of the unit. Here you've got a um, time gauge. The 44 here in this case is actually hours, and then the red portion is fraction of an hour. Um, this over here is the fill post that you use to pour in new crystal. I'm going to turn the machine off now. Um, and you unwind this. Grab a funnel. Stick it in there. You pour the crystal in. And the crystal is going to go into one of these two canisters. Uh, the first one in the front is the new crystal canister and it should never be f higher or more full than there. It always needs a little bit of air um, space for it to operate properly. And then the empty uh, one in the back here, which has been emptied recently, is the dirty crystal receptacle. And that's where the crystal ends up at the end of the vacuum loop. And you can see a little bit of crystal in the bottom there. This crystal is aluminum oxide crystal. It's not aluminum, but it is called aluminum oxide. Right here, you've got a little hanger for the uh, handpiece. Some people like to use that. It makes it kind of simple. And then I'll show you a couple of things briefly on the bottom of the machine, and that's going to wrap it up. Um, here on the bottom is a spot where we have a, what we call the packing bolt. And it looks like this brass, or there's also a big black plastic one. And when you're shipping one of these units in for service or whatnot, um, or just transporting it, you want to screw that in, screw it all the way. It secures the motor in place, um, the motor mount, so that uh, the motor, which is a heavy portion of the inside of the machine, um, remains, uh, well, it can break if you don't put it in there, basically. So you want to make sure you do that. So that is the Dermagenesis Dermacare Microdermabrasion Machine. It's a medical grade machine, um, very powerful, um, very good quality technology that is still uh, relevant and a very effective treatment tool today. Um, we sell these machines at giftedtouch.com, as you may already know. And if you have any further questions about the operation of this machine, feel free to email us or give us a call. 
Thank you very much for your time.